In this video, I'm going to go through an example of building up a confidence interval to estimate the true mean when the population standard deviation is known. Little note, this is a less likely case than when the population standard deviation is unknown. That's more common. Um, but yeah, let's assume we happen to know the population standard deviation is 396.5. And then we have now collected a sample of demands. Okay, um, now here are my sample statistics on this sample. Uh, we can calculate the average using Excel's equals average call, the standard deviation for the sample using stdev.s, and the sample size using a count call. Those formulas are also commented out here. Okay, now there are problems with doing this type of analysis on this data. I will speak to that later as well and um, give you other ways to possibly consider how to handle or forecast for this type of data. But for now, let's go build this confidence interval um, for this true mean. So the formula is the following. The lower limit is the sample mean minus the z-score times the population standard deviation divided by the root of the sample size. And the upper limit is just almost that same thing, but we just add the second piece. This second piece is also called the margin of error. I will speak more to that later as well. Okay, but so let's go do these calculations. The one thing that I'm missing so far in this formula is the z-score. So I'm going to start by calculating that value. And to get that z-score, I'm going to use a norm.s.inv call in Excel. Within that, I'm going to need to have the area to the left of my desired z-score. So let's go talk about that first. So we're gonna come back to this Excel call before we do that, we need to figure out what the area to the left of either of these limits is. So for the 95% confidence interval, um, which is what I'm looking to build up, that leaves 5% in total to the outsides, uh, and that gives 2.5% to either tail. So a couple ways of doing this. 1 minus 95% or 100 minus 95% gives you that 5% and that's split between the two tails. Dividing that value by 2 gives the area on the left side. So that's the 2.5%. So that's this. So if I go use that as my area to the left here, of my z-score, that's great. That will give me the z-score for this lower limit. No problem. So that gives me negative 1.9566, or sorry, 95996. Um, note that's a negative value. It's a negative z-score because it's below the mean. So you're welcome to use that. Just be careful here and here. Um, you should drop that minus sign by using an absolute value or putting a minus in front of it. That's also an easy way of doing it. So that's one way of doing the z-score. If you don't like doing that, there's another possibility. You could use the area to the left of the upper limit by doing this one minus 95 over two and then just adding the 95%, which is this middle area, like that. So that gives us the 97.5%, which is the area all the way to the left of the upper limit. That will give a positive z-score of 1.959964. Okay, and now we're ready to start building up these lower and upper limits using this formula. Okay, so I'm just going to hide some rows here so we can see all the values that we need all at once. Beautiful. Okay, so for the lower limit, 
take your sample average minus your z-score times your population standard deviation divide by the square root of your sample size like that. And I'm just going to comment out that formula so you can see it. I just use an apostrophe to do that. For the upper limit, again, take the sample mean. Now add the z-score times by the true population standard deviation. And then divide by the root of the sample size. Like that. Okay, so those are my lower and upper limit for the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval, with these parameters and these statistics. Um, one little note, what we add and subtract, so this piece here that's after the plus minus, this is called the margin of error. So sometimes we're just interested in that piece. That is just the z-score times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So that margin of error is 77.33, if you will. That is what we're adding and subtracting from um, the mean, the, the sample mean, to get our interval. I'm just going to pause and pull up that picture one last time. Beautiful. So that margin of error that we see the 77, that's how wide our interval is. It's 77.33 to either side of our sample mean, which was the 927.76. So you could also build up your interval by taking that 927, subtracting 77 to get to the lower limit, and take that 927 and add 77 to get to the upper limit. Okay, thanks for watching.